I am recreating my 3 years old tutorial in Blender's latest version. In this video you will learn 4 things. Creating the box, adding bones to it, animating the box, adding textures. We are going to kill 4 birds with 1 stone. What? Why have you need to kill birds to make this tutorial? Disclaimer. No animals were harmed during the making of this tutorial. Get to the point. Ok ok. Select the default lovely cube and go to edit mode by pressing tab. Or just click on this option. Click on face select or just press 3 not from the numpad. Select the upper face of the box, press X and click on the faces option to delete the upper side or you can say in the upper face of the box. Click on edge select or just press 2, again not from the number pad like me, otherwise you will get the result something like this. Let me select the edge select mode again. Ok now select the edge of the box and press E to extrude. Press Y because we need it on the Y axis and press 1 to set the size that we need and enter. Select the other edge of the box, press E to extrude, then press X and then press 1 and enter. Now repeat the same thing but this time we do not type 1 for size, we enter negative 1 because we need the same size but in the opposite direction. Our box is almost ready now we will add some bones first go to object mode by pressing tab or just choose from here now press shift a and add a single bone from the armatures list go to edit mode press 1 from number pad this time zoom a bit if you want now go to wireframe mode by pressing z and then just move your mouse to the wireframe option Select the bone's lower side and press G to grab the bone. Press Z because we need it straight and take the cursor to the lower face or side of the box and press Ctrl to lock the bone here then left click or enter. Select the upper part of the bone and press E to extrude and now we have another bone. We need it on the axis of X so we just press X and we need this bone for the arms of the box that we have extruded from the box. And if you remember we have entered 1 for the size, we need this bone to control the arm of the box so we press 1 again for size and enter. Now we have a problem, the bone is not on the arm of the box. To do this we need to separate the bone from its mother bone. Select the bone and press Alt P. Now we can disconnect the bone, just click on the second option. Our bone is disconnected, not our body is bone, <laughs> don't worry, they are still connected. The bone of our box is disconnected and now we can easily grab it to the arm of the box. Just press G to grab the bone, press X, press 1 and enter. Now we need 3 more bones like this. We can just repeat the process or just duplicate the bone. Shift D for duplicate and we can just rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis but my pivot point is set to median and if I rotate it then it will rotate like this. If we rotate this from the middle of its mother bone like this then it will be placed easily where we want to place it. Now you can see the 3D cursor is in the middle of its mother bone. If we change the rotation point by changing the pivot point to 3D cursor that is currently on the median so we could do what we want to do. And to do that press the period button and select the 3D cursor. Now press R to rotate and then Z because we want to rotate it on the axis of Z and enter 180 for 180 degree of rotation. Now select both the bones and press shift D for duplicate and press R then Z and 90 because this time we just need to rotate them on 90 degrees and lastly press enter. Now we have to tell the blender to control the box using these bones but this is not Jarvis so we have to do it manually. To do this we have to rename the bones first because I don't want to confuse myself. Press 1 from the numpad and select the right bone and press F2 and rename it right bone. It means that the other bones are wrong. Wow, what a lovely joke. I want to give you an Oscar for this. I am waiting, where is it? Here it is. Do you still want to take this? I'm so sorry! After renaming all the bones, go to object mode and select the box and then select the armature. Always remember, select the box first because we want the box controlled by the bones or the armature. Press Ctrl P to set parent with empty groups. Now what's a parent? Imagine a kid who is walking with his parents. He will go where his parents will go. This exactly happens in Blender. If we told Blender that the bones are the parent of the box, then whenever we scale, rotate or move the parent, the child will also follow the parent. But you know, nowadays kids have no manners. They don't follow his parents. Hmm. But anyways, follow me. Now select the box, go to edit mode, then click on the object data. Now we have to assign bones to the box arms, or box doors, or whatever you call them. I, I don't know the exact word, but, but the main thing is we have to tell the blender which bone will control which part of the box. Ok, press numpad 1, now we could easily know where the right, left, front and back bones are. Choose the face selection and select the right arm and assign it to the right bone. Select the left arm and assign it to the left bone and so on.
and lastly choose all the arms and press ctrl i for invert selection now assign it to the mother bone that we have renamed as body press the auto keying button select the bones or you can say armature now go to pose mode we have to close the box by rotating the arm bones but we can't just rotate like this this is happening because we have set the pivot point to 3d cursor now we have to change it to the active element press the period button again and set it to the active element now press r and x now repeat the process and close the box Okay, the box is closed and now we can animate it. Go to around 30 frames and open the first arm. Now let me see how it looks. Oh wow, it's working perfectly. Now select the other bone and I will move the keyframe a bit and repeat the same process. Let's see what we have done. Now I will go around like 60 frames and open the third arm but this time we will rotate it on the x axis. Now this is the time of the last arm, press R, press Y, oops, not Y, is the uh, another axis, press X. Okay, let's see what we have done it. There's a little bit of a problem there, the lower arms are intersecting the upper arms. We will fix it by letting the upper arms go first. Select the lower arms bone one by one and move the keyframes forward. Okay now they are not intersecting each other and the motion is also not unicorn, sorry uniform. <laughs> okay now let me check the last keyframe, I think this is 70. Click on this printer looking icon, uh, output properties and set the last keyframe to 70 because we don't need to render more than 70 frames and set compression to 0 and color to RGB and set the location wherever you want. I mostly choose the file format as a PNG and convert it into MP4 in just few seconds in DaVinci Resolve. But we haven't finished our work yet. We are not going to render our paper box. Go to object mode, select the box, click on this wrench looking icon and add a solidify modifier. Solidify modifiers add thickness to the object. Now adjust the thickness of the box and if you haven't noticed yet, then let me tell you the thickness is not even. If you ever become confused because of the odd thickness of your object after adding the solidify modifier, then just check this box. Now your object will have even thickness. But in this case, I don't want even thickness because it will look like a wooden box. So I will uncheck this option. But it still has a problem. The edges are too sharp. So now I will add another modifier called bevel. Now the edges are not that sharp. I will increase the segments and decrease the amount. Now it looks more like a cardboard box instead of a wooden box. We need a surface now, so press Shift A and add a plane mesh. Grab it by pressing G and press Z and 1, oops not 1, it should be negative 1. You can just manually grab on the Z axis and hold control on the lower side of the box. Both ways work the same. Now press S to scale the plane and in edit mode I will extrude it to make it solid. You also can do this by adding the solidify modifier to it with even thickness checked. Now I will duplicate this to make the wall. Press A to select all and shift D to duplicate and right click to cancel the movement. Rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees. 
with edge snapping on grab the wall on the y axis hold control on the edge of the surface it will automatically set the position just after the ground edge now grab it again on the axis of z oh wow i have not snapped it but wow how perfectly it fits into the ground but we need more satisfaction so again grab on the z axis hold control on the ground and left click now we need another wall repeat the same process After this we will add textures to our walls, surface and the box. Before that let me set my camera angles. Press N and View option then check camera to view. Set the camera angle what you want and uncheck the box now it's texture time. Open your browser and go to ambientcg.com search for cardboard select what you like the most and download it. Locate your file and unzip it. I will add it in a new folder. Now go to object mode and select the box. Go to edit mode, select the whole box if it's not all selected. Press U to unwrap it in a cube projection so that the texture will look more natural and realistic. Now go to object mode and then go to the shading tab. Press Z and select the rendered option. Select the principal BSDF and press Shift Ctrl T. Go to the location where the textures are. Select the colored one, normal GL and lastly the roughness and click on principled texture setup. Our box is ready with the cardboard texture. Yay! The texture looks a bit bigger. We can change the scale amount by going in edit mode. Confirm the box is all selected. In the bottom left area select the UV editor and select all. Now we have selected basically the faces of the box. If we scale up the box faces, the texture will automatically start getting smaller. Now it looks perfect for me and we need another texture for the surface and the walls. I will use wooden texture for both of them. Repeat the same process. You can also scale the size from the nodes. Now go to rendering properties and limit the rendering and viewport samples to 100 and denoise must have been on. Now press Ctrl F12 and wait. Many, many minutes later. When all your PNGs have rendered, select all and import them into the Vinci Resolve and click on render button. Rename the file, select the file format, press add. And finally click on render all. 10 10 I have not changed any light settings because I think in this case it was not necessary. It looks how I wanted that's why I have not added or changed any lighting settings. Thanks for learning. <sighs>